Hey everyone, Doug from Convology here, and today I've got a really special treat for you. We finally, finally have the ability to create a fully customizable Thrive Apprentice course index page. This is huge. What does that mean? Well, what you're looking at now is what I created in 30 seconds using the new Thrive Apprentice course list element in Thrive Architect. No longer are we confined to that completely uneditable course index page that you're used to seeing in Thrive Apprentice, and now we can practically create anything that our minds can come up with in Thrive Architect. So let's dive in and take a look at how we can do that. All right, so here I am on a completely blank page. This is just a blank page using my theme template from Thrive Theme Builder. All I have to do is expand our element tray here and search for course list. And you'll see that I have two options. I have the apprentice lesson list, which we'll go over in another video, and we have the course list. So go ahead and take the course list and drag that onto your canvas here and let go. And you're going to see this familiar window that allows you to pick one of many, actually I'm surprised by how many options there are, many beautifully designed course lists completely done for you. The one that I showed you at the beginning of the video, I just chose course list 01. I actually really like this one. It's clean and it most closely resembles what I've been using now already for months on my course list. So I didn't want to be too jarring on my students and completely replace that. But if you look through this and you scroll down, there are quite a few really, really slick options. Um, course list 15 jumps out at me as something that looks super modern. Um, if you have the images to kind of back this up, course list 15, uh, actually, let's click on that. Let's click on that and have that open up here. And we are on my membership site, so it's going to pull the images um, that I'm using, which are much more horizontal, um, definitely in uh, landscape mode, whereas these images are in portrait mode. But wow, there's a lot of potential here. Um, we're not going to choose this option because my images don't work. So in the upper left, if you're picking around and choosing one that you like, click the course list up in the upper left, and now you can change templates. Just bear in mind, anything that you do now is going to completely replace any edits that you made previously. Um, but 18 is also intriguing. I'll click on 18, and maybe we'll use that to kind of play around and explore some of these options. But ooh, I actually really like this. Uh, so first things first, as we explore this together, um, what I'm noticing is on the left-hand side, we have our two options, edit our design, and this orange button has become contextually the button that when clicked is going to um, bring up the ability to edit what's here in the center of my screen right now. Um, and then I'd have to hit done to come back. So we're gonna do that in a second, but let's explore here. So we have our display topic filter. If we turn that off, you'll see that this section here goes away um, and it comes back, um, comes back when we turn it back on and we're gonna have to then choose our style that we had selected again. So it looks like if you toggle that on and off, what's going to happen is the style is going to, going to change. So just be aware of that. Um, we have our display course search here in the top right. If we turn that off and back on, uh, you'll see there too, that, uh, that also changed. So we will need to adjust those again. Um, we have the ability to adjust columns. If we wanted to go four instead of three, we could drop down to two. That's intriguing, but I think three looks the best. So we'll stick with three. We have the ability to adjust our horizontal space and our vertical space. That's the distance between our post list elements. Fairly standard stuff. Uh, we have pagination. That means if you had like 20 courses, you would see kind of like a blog post list in the, in the bottom section here, the ability for people to search through the pages. And then if we open up this advanced option here, uh, there are no courses to display. That looks like a, uh, a result message if someone is filtering the courses or doing a search that has no, no answer to that query. So very interesting stuff, um, probably just the beginning, um, but I'm already liking it. Plus, if you look on the left here, we have all of our normal Thrive Architect options like layout and position, background style, and so on. So we can really do whatever we want. Um, one of the things I wanna jump into next is the filter courses option here. If we look at our filter courses option, um, it looks like we can click here and choose what courses we want to show. So I can show specific courses. So let's say I wanted to create a page dedicated to one course, but I still wanted to use this particular element. I could do that. We could search by authors. Um, not a whole lot there on a one author site like mine. We could search through our topics. So in my case, I have courses and I have workshops. That's kind of cool. So I could create a workshops page and a courses page 
if I wanted to separate them. I like that a lot. Uh, we also have the ability to filter based off of the content levels that we've created in the back end of Thrive Apprentice. So before we continue, let's jump in and look at what that looks like so we can understand what these are pulling from. Okay, so here we are in the back end of our Thrive Apprentice installation. And right now I'm in the course topics section here. If you choose the uh, first layer of our menu system, we have courses. I'm in course topics. This is where it was pulling the workshops and courses that I have with all the custom icons and colors. We also have dynamic labels, and this is where the uh, page is pulling. I have three labels. I have my coming soon label, my premium course label, and my free for logged in users label. Um, this is where these are coming from, and that's pretty interesting uh, because it's going to pull all of them even if you don't really use them. So like for me, I don't offer any free for logged in users content. I just created that, I think, during a demo that I was doing for someone. And so it did pull that in. So that's something to keep in mind. So if we come back here, um, you'll see that they do have the no restriction free for all visitors option. That I think is Thrive Apprentice made. And then they have the free for logged in users, which is one that I created. So um, technically these aren't gonna show anything anyway, so I could leave them on. Um, but if you have, like if I only wanted to show my premium courses or courses that were tagged as premium course, this is what um, I would want to come in and select and that information is pulled from my access restriction labels here inside of Thrive Apprentice. And that was pretty interesting. If you hover over this little info icon, it does show you, um, this is the old design, but it does show you this is what that is. I call it the, I call them a restriction labels. They're called access restriction labels. Um, difficulty levels, uh, this is pretty cool. You can sort and filter by difficulty level. Um, that is dictated on the course level itself. So let's take a look at that. So here in my brand new uh, Thrive Theme Builder Essentials course, which I just launched actually today, the day I'm making this video, um, if we go to our, or we don't have to go anywhere, it's right here at the top, right when we click into it, you'll see that we can set a difficulty level. Uh, you can add your own difficulty levels. Um, I think I have easy, intermediate, advanced, easy to intermediate, intermediate to advanced. Um, I don't even remember making those two, um, but those are options for us to filter here. And then here, this one is the most interesting to me because this is the one that Thrive hasn't done a whole lot with right now. And that's course um, progress, which is interesting, and course access. So course access makes total sense. That's intuitive. The person is logged in and does not have access, meaning they uh, do not qualify under, if I jump in here and we go under access restrictions, um, for me, I have mine set up using a wishlist member. Um, so I, on this particular course, Thrive Theme Builder Essentials, um, anyone who's a member of my Convology Pro membership or a member of the course itself, um, and they were assigned these membership levels or these levels um, as more of like a status based on what they purchased in my Thrivecart integration. So um, essentially, someone to have no access would basically not have Convology Pro or, or Theme Builder Essentials. So that means that they maybe bought another course, maybe they maybe they purchased my Thrive Architect Ultimate Essentials course, but they don't have access to Pro or the Theme Builder. Um, they would they would if I unchecked it, they would not see this course. That's interesting. And if they are logged in and do have access, and I checked this box, that means they would have access and they would be able to see it. That's that's really intriguing because what you could essentially do then is create a dashboard, a members only dashboard, and based on what access people have, they see their courses. Hmm, I kind of like that. The next ones are, this is the most, this is what I was talking about before is, is something that Thrive really hasn't done a whole lot with, and that's this concept of progress. Um, not started in progress and completed. This is basically, um, you know, I don't know if Thrive does a great job at this right now. Essentially when someone clicks into a course and views a lesson, it's considered in progress, whether they viewed one or 20 lessons. Uh, not started means they haven't clicked into it at all. And completed is they have clicked into every lesson. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have, um, done everything in that lesson. And I think that's why this is so kind of arbitrary right now. Um, it's almost like you need a, a box to check. 
that um, this lesson has been completed, right? And I think Thrive is going to be working on that kind of stuff in the future as they turn Apprentice into more of a course platform with other integrations so that um, particularly today or yesterday they announced um, more publicly their developer API. And I think this is going to play into that. People are going to be able to create integrations that integrate with this in progress element. So um, this is really, really cool. Um, I really like these filter options. This is way more robust than I ever expected. So that's filtering. Now let's dive in and take a look at edit design. So under the edit design, um, this is where, like I mentioned, you click on it and now you can interact with and edit everything. Um, so what I'm going to focus on here is less of the mechanics of how to edit, because if you hover your mouse over the title and you click on it, you can see up here in our text, I call this the kitchen sink. In our text kitchen sink, we can see that it's dynamically pulling the course title. Not a whole lot to do there, but let's say I wanted that to be bigger. I can increase the font size simply by on the left hand side, increasing it to whatever size I wanted it to be. And if I found something I liked, I could leave that there. Under the text for the uh, course description or summary, I could increase um, I can increase my font size there. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do so though. And as you make changes to one, it makes changes to all. Um, down here, you can see these things are in columns. So really, if I the, the the key here is going to be if I expand my element tray, you can see that I have all of my course list elements in. All of these are completely brand new, um, but they are intuitive. And how you use them is you simply click edit on this course list element here. So we have things like the author image, which is right here, the Convology logo. Um, this is the author image. If I look for the cover image, that's what is technically in the background. Um, the way that this template that we chose was built is that these are content boxes and they chose content boxes so that no matter what aspect ratio of an image that you had, it still looked nice. So let me show you that for example. So if we chose our minimum height, you can see that as I make these bigger, the images still fill the entire background, um, even if they were too big or too small. So um, that's a, a good thing to remember that when you use images and you go on the left here, background style, and you click on the image that they have, you can see it's dynamically pulling the course cover image um, rather than um, a static image. So here, if we did drag in our course cover image and just drop it into the box, there you go. You can see that it did just drop the entirety of my image in, and you can see how it differs from the images below. It doesn't quite fill that whole space. So that's, that's interesting. Um, I like that element. It's kind of like the blog post list element. If you have experience with that in Thrive Architect, um, okay, so we have a couple more things. Our course summary is here. Our difficulty level is right here. They've pulled it in as um, words. And then they've chosen uh, an icon just to put above it, which is like this little graph thing. It's an interesting image for difficulty. I guess that makes sense. Course label. Let's drag that in. Um, you can see these labels are what we were putting under our dynamic labels, those are these right here. So if we come back here, we have um, premium course. So you can see that there's no dynamic coloring being brought in, um, but we can add, like if we wanted to make all of these, like I'll make them Convology blue. Uh, the number of lessons, that's just a uh, dynamic text that gets pulled in right there. The course name, obviously that's right there, course name, course title. The progress that the person has made, that's interesting. If we drop that in here, um, or let's drop it above the text box. So you can see for me, I'm logged in. Obviously these two workshops are coming in the next week or two. They're not started, obviously, because they're not done. And these are showing us in progress. So it's a text-based dynamic text. So if I click on it and I come up here again to my text kitchen sink, you can see that it's just pulling um, and this is, this is a good thing to show. So apprentice course data now is available to us as a dynamic text uh, variable. And under course uh, apprentice course data, we can choose um, these options. So dynamically, we can pull the title, the summary, the type, the label, the call to action label, the topic, the number of lessons in the course. That's this text we just showed before the course progress and difficulty level. So really, if we delete that and come back here, the element tray, Really, a lot of these are, are just 
dynamically pull the text, which is totally fine. Um, okay, so topic icon, let's take a look at what that looks like. Cool, like I chose the, um, like the graduation cap as my course icon. Uh, so that's what's being pulled in there. Um, you could do something cool with that, like maybe superimpose it over the image. Um, like if we were to drop it inside, I don't know if I can do that. Let's drop it below here. Yeah, so I could like drop it into the center if I wanted to. Um, that's interesting. It's just a design tool. Topic title courses. Okay, that's what this is up here. So in the upper right hand corner of my course images, this is the what they call it, the topic title. Okay, course type icons. So in Thrive Apprentice, um, things are like video lessons, text lessons, um, text and video lessons. And that's just a little icon that gets pulled in dynamically into each one. So you can see, because I have text elements in my lessons, it's pulled these in. I've never liked these, just to be honest, um, because these are all video lessons in every single one of my courses. And on some of them, I've just included some text, but it wants to call it a video and a text lesson. Um, I just don't think that's too relevant for me. And that's, again, the text version of the icon. Quite impressive. Uh, exceeded my expectations for a first version coming out. So if you wanted to make a completely custom course index, this really is how you do it. Um, now, I want to point something out here. So what you're looking at now is the Thrive University. This is the default now what I would call the OG old school Thrive Apprentice course index. This is still 100% their default and you are technically stuck using this if, for example, um, a student were to click into a lesson. So let's see what that would look like real quick. If someone were to click into my Thrive Theme Builder Essentials course and then in the upper left hand corner in my courses, right, in the breadcrumbs, if they were to return to my course page, they would see something just like this. They would not be taken back to my custom built post list. Now, Thrive has in their announcement stated that it is coming soon that they, you can change this page itself to use your custom built post list. I assume they're just gonna make it 100% a Thrive Architect editable page. Um, but you're also going to create, like if we click into back on my courses here, this is also 100% in the old school Thrive Apprentice list. This is using the old list. Um, we don't yet have the ability to dynamically edit this to use the list element that they recently added that you can check out in another one of the videos that I'm making. Um, so once you're in the old system, there's no way back to the new system. I've created a workaround though. So on my website, courses index, so like, for example, on my member dashboard here, if you click on courses and workshops and it takes you to uh, members.convology.com forward slash courses, it would have taken you to the old apprentice index page. However, I created a uh, 302 redirect. It's like a 301 or 307. Um, I created a redirect to send people to members.convology.com slash course dash index. So I'm temporarily redirecting people to this new version so that let's do this again. When someone clicks on my Thrive Theme Builder Essentials course, they're taken into the course itself. If in the breadcrumbs they click to go back to courses, they're taken back to this new page. So that's a temporary workaround that you can use uh, in order to bypass the old school Thrive Apprentice Index page. So hopefully within a couple of weeks, I did mention a couple of updates and they tend to update, I think like every other week or every third week. Um, just be aware that that's coming uh, and, and until then do a, do a redirect. And if you have any questions about how to do a redirect, um, feel free to uh, leave a comment. Um, I'll put a little bit more information on how to do that over on combology.com as well. So that's gonna do it for this uh, course list element. I'm really, really excited. I already think that on my website, this is beautiful. I have full customization. I can now make the best looking course index uh, available for WordPress. So that'll do it for me, guys. Uh, this was Doug at Convology. I'm super excited to dig in and play around with this stuff. And I hope that you can create some really cool course apprentice indexes yourself. I'd, be, I'd actually really love to see what you come up with. Um, so until then, I will see you in the next video.